All right, let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for this beautiful day, another day, the Lord's day that you've given to us. I ask now, Father, that you take over and that you speak through me and to me. Glorify yourself, Father. Thank you for every good and every perfect gift from above. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, Jeff and I, we, <laughs> we didn't do anything this weekend except rest at home. Uh, well, that wasn't the only thing we did, but pretty much rest because we were getting over colds. And I hear that it's going around the church. Some people have it. But it wasn't bad. Praise God. I feel much better. Just a little tired, but much better. And um, also, I, I was reading the movie Unplanned. We talked about that before. It's a pro-life movie. And it is doing excellent. The sales are booming, and they're going through the roof. One of the high, out of all the movies they've made, it's the highest as far as DVD sales goes. And uh, I'm looking forward to the Overcomers movie, which is, uh, has already come out. I'm waiting for it to go to the venue theater, uh, which is about four times, maybe five times less the money, maybe six times. Anyway, um, and we need to continue praying for the Bahamian people and the people in Okra Coke Island, like Pastor Susie and her family. Um, I mean, they were devastated, and I mean, so far, I think in Bahamas, the latest that I heard, maybe somebody can correct me if it's different, but around 2,500 people? Yeah. Yeah, Roger just told me that that's going to swerve off um, the Flor Florida coast, and it's not really going to make an impact. <clears throat> so praise God for all, everyone who's prayed. Uh, we've just been very fortunate. And there was uh, no loss of life in Okra Coke. So that was a major victory. Even though there was a lot of, you know, yeah, flooding. Yes. Oh, yeah. And Sam's and, and a lot of people have had uh, 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 places there so you can go and donate materials and supplies. So, you know, the United States, I praise God for our country because he's made us a very generous people. You know, we not only have a lot, but we give a lot when it's time, when rubber meets the road, when you hear of great tragedies and crises in the world, who's the first one that usually gives? The United States usually. And so I praise God for that. It's a blessing. All right, uh, today, uh, you know, I, I, I thought, well, what am I gonna teach on it? Even last night, it was like, hmm. And uh, the Lord just gave me victory, victory. And towards the end, I'm going to tie it in a little bit with uh, the message that will be preached uh, today, the message. Uh, the Lord gave me that last night. But anyway, uh, we begin first with the enemy is truly defeated. We need to know that. Uh, I went through a, 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 at least four classes of Sunday school where we went through our identity in Jesus Christ. And by knowing our identity in Jesus Christ, we can have victory. We can be victorious. And um, what we need to know more than anything, I'm going to start out by saying that we are, are not fighting a spiritual battle uh, for victory. We are fighting from a position of victory. There's a difference from a position of victory because we are already victorious in Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 6, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. <clears throat> By grace ye are saved, and this is the clincher, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So positionally speaking, we are already, even right now, seated in heavenly places. That's a place of victory within or in Jesus Christ. And uh, this verse, especially verse 2, uh, uh, verse 6 rather, teaches us that we are seated, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above 
all power and principality and every name that can be named in this age and in the age to come. When it talks about every principality and power, it's talking about demonic forces. It's talking about the highest forces. And it says here, through the blood of Jesus Christ, and it is through the blood of Jesus Christ and only through the blood of Jesus Christ that we have victory. We have been given access to live from a third heaven reality, a reality of victory, Victory, love, joy, peace, and constant overcoming spiritual power. Excuse me. We are not, and I circled the word not, under demonic forces trying to break through to where God is. We are spiritually seated positionally in the third heaven with Jesus Christ, far above all these dark forces that are trying to overwhelm us daily, establishing on the earth as it is already established in heaven. And um, I have here, you can access every spiritual blessing God has for you in the heavenly realms. You don't have to labor under demonic warfare. You don't have to live feeling oppressed and depressed. Yes, we all go through that, but you don't have to live in a constant state of that. You can have joy, and we spoke about that last, uh, the last two Sundays. You can have victory. You can overcome the stubborn areas of the flesh and the soul. You don't have to settle for moments of temporary relief. Um, you know, well, I'm, I'm not gonna, okay, you can have permanent transformation, permanent. I am go going to read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. These are some of the most powerful verses, I would say, in the Bible. and Some of the most beautiful verses, revel revelatory verses rev that show revelation. And I entitled this, Our Inheritance. And it begins like this. Ephesians 1, verses 17 through 23. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know. And see, I'm going to stop right there. It is so important for us to pray for revelation for the spirit of revelation and wisdom that God can show us, open our eyes up so we can see. This is what Paul is saying. What is the hope of his calling? What is the hope of his calling? And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. We are so rich beyond, we don't even realize it. That is our inheritance. And, verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power? This needs to be revealed to us. That greatness of power we have access to. And that's why so many times we live as paupers when God is meaning for us to be so rich in him and full of power. It says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe? according to the working of his mighty power, mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And then the last two verses, and have put all things under his feet. Have you ever sang that song, all things under his feet? It's a cute song. It's a powerful song. But literally, God has put all things under the feet of Jesus Christ. And because we're his heirs, all things under our feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth 
all in all. I mean, these verses have, are so rich in content that it would be good to just take that little passage of scripture and ask God to, to meditate on it and ask God to reveal to you the riches that we find in Jesus Christ. What is the hope? The hope of his calling is eternal life. It's victory in Jesus Christ. It's so much more. You know what this reminds me so much of? <clears throat> and I didn't take any of this from um, Pastor David Jeremiah. But this morning, he, uh, we listen to him every Sunday morning, breakfast in bed. <laughs> but he, he's an excellent teacher, excellent teacher. And he taught on the importance of reading the word of God. I mean, and, and really basically he said, you know, we cannot have any of that victory, any, anything that we cannot really claim or, go, or, or, or get his, have his promises fulfilled in our lives until we actually get and delve in the word and find out what those promises are. And it was such a powerful message. And, you know, I had already picked this topic and I, and I had, you know, I already had this information. You know, I have a, uh, uh, how do you say, just a whole lot of stuff that I've gone through before, you know, uh, studies that I've done on my own, etc. things that I've picked up. I mean, it's a lot. And uh, I had already picked this up, but I said, boy, it goes perfectly with that. Uh, but anyway, um, the, uh, Colossians 2.15 says this. And having disarmed, the word, the operative word is disarmed. And having disarmed authorities and powers, that's what God did. Jesus Christ. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them by the cross. The enemy is truly defeated. Okay, you know how now they're talking about disarming uh, us, uh, the United States, the citizens? You had Beto go there on the debate. By the way, that's like a comedy show. I could not, uh, yes, I could not, uh, what's the word, uh, take in the last two debates. I could not. I promise you, I turned it on. I can help you on that. You know who won the last one? Trump. Trump. Yeah. Trump. I already know that. Praise God. And it's come out in a lot of cartoons, uh, not cartoons, but a lot of memes. And it's so true. It is so true. No. Praise God. Do you know, I could not, uh, they weren't palpable to me. I could not even turn it on and leave it on. I turned it off. But this one, I said, you know, I told Jeff, let's, let's pretend it's a comedy. You know, and I didn't quite say that, but I, I was thinking within myself, you know, it is a comedy. And they were making us laugh. He has a new strategy for this campaign. Uh, Praise God. No, because, because guess what? That'll only make a lot of people want to vote for President Trump. Praise God. But when we watched this comedy, uh, and Beto spoke, and he was talking about uh, cursing, uh, well, use the hell word or whatever. Yes, we're going to go confiscate. Uh, I mean, it was like, are you serious? Was it you, Pastor Dave? Because I look at your Facebook a lot, but I don't know if it was you, but I think it may have been you. If not, it was somebody else. They said before he had a, like a two percentage, uh, uh, that was you, two percentage rating uh, uh, for his approval, approval rating. And now with, after the debate, it's gone down to one percent. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. He rivals with skim milk, Pastor Dave said. I mean, I'm telling you. So this verse made me think of that because really, the reason the Constitution, we have the, the amendment, the, 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 the uh, right to arms, is for, uh, against the government if they become a dictatorship. That's the reason. And so this, right here, this verse says, and having disarmed authorities and powers, that's what Jesus Christ did. He disarmed the demon po demonic powers, all that is satanic. The Bible, it's like coming and taking the guns from them. He disarmed them. It says, he made a show of them openly. That word I've heard um, my pastor in New York City when I was there, he was Greek. The word is spectacle. He made a spectacle of these uh, demonic powers, triumphing over them by the cross, the cross. 
The enemy is truly defeated. When we read scripture, and I'm going to say challenge all of you, start with the book of Ephesians. It is so full of, my goodness, victory. And it's so full of encouraging words as far as our inheritance in Jesus Christ. Uh, I was thinking, but I'm, oh, no, no, I am going to do that. I'll at least give the last few verses of three. I already gave you two verses, one, uh, several verses from chap uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 2. And now I'm going to read a little on Ephesians chapter 3. And Paul is talking and he says, Unto me who am less, verse 8, less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now here's where the, uh, <clears throat> the main verses that I wanted to accentuate. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Now, this right here that he may grant you, that's us too, that's me, that he may grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might, you say with power, by the spirit in the inner man. You know, sometimes we can feel so weak, our body, we get older, we are sick, uh, we get sick, uh, whatever. We may have some type of infirmity, whether it's temporal, whether it's permanent but we can be strong in the Lord. Inside, we can be strong and mighty in the Lord, powerful in the Lord. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend, to understand with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. All this we can have. And this is my favorite verse, Pastor Dave. Probably you see it when I send you an email. Uh, and I, you, you all have heard me quote it. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. It doesn't just say who's able to do abundantly. It says exceeding, it's another uh, 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 adjective, exceeding abundantly above all that ye ask or think or can imagine according to the power that works in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus through all ages, world without end. Amen. We serve a mighty God and that power is available to us. We need, we, all we need to do is access that power. The problem is too many of us are not. We're not delving into his riches, which is the word of God, and seeing his promises, the promises that he's given to us. How can we even be partakers of his promises if we don't know what they are? I mean, his word is so rich. And I'm going to give uh, 1 Timothy 6, 12. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Here, we're being called to fight the good fight. I mean, there's so many verses that are so, so rich. 
1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved promises, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Today we're going to hear preaching on that. Perfecting holiness called deliverance. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. Speak not this to condemn. I speak this not to condemn you. For I have said before that you or ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Here it is. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all tribulation. For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. His flesh, physical being. But we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. And yet in all of this, he says he's filled with all comfort. Obviously, we know from testimony after testimony that Paul was a tremendous warrior in the Lord. He was a victorious man. And then, <clears throat> well, I'm not going to read this uh, today, maybe next time. Uh, okay, Psalm 34, 6 through 8. Psalm 34, 6 through 8. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth, that means is surrounds, encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. That word delivers is when you are, deliver is to be in some type of uh, turmoil, problem, whatever, and and God comes in to free you from that. In the same sense, we need to be delivered as Christians from many things. God knows. But I will talk just a little bit before I end the Sunday school. It says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Now I'm going to read this passage before I read uh, David Wilkerson, uh, a devotion. Okay, this is from, and, and notice the tremendous victory. This is a victorious chapter on faith, Hebrews 11. As soon as we hear Hebrews 11, we know that that's the chapter. They call it the faith chapter. Hebrews 11, verses 32 through 40. As you read, as I, as I read this and you listen, pay attention to all everything that these men of God throughout the Bible did because they were full of faith and living victoriously. It begins, and what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Sa Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight. They were strong, uh, courageous. Turned to flight the armies of the aliens, <laughs> In other words, they came and, and they just fled because God put fear in their hearts. Women received their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. They were willing to die, put their lives on the line, because they knew they had a better in heaven. They were going to be in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. And others had a trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, forsaken, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy, 
They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us. I'll repeat that again. God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. God is good. These are verses that show Christians, you know, who suffered and died for the Lord, who, who may not have even died for the Lord, but went through tremendous persecution, and yet they were victorious in him. Now, all of us, all of us go through ebbs and waves in our Christian lives, and sometimes, you know, we get weaker and uh, we fall. And here's the thing, you know, we have a choice always whether we, uh, as, as Dr. Fowell would say, uh, get a hold of our boot, bootstraps and get up, or we stay fallen. And when we consider that many times we are in bondage, in chains, that we are uh, completely, I mean, almost at the, merc at the mercies of, of Satan, why? because we continued and continue and continue to fall in the same sins. It's not just a matter of just sinning and then repenting and, and, and being victorious, but it's a matter of falling into the same thing again and again. Why? Because we have made a decision that uh, in our hearts that we will, we, we, we choose our flesh, the desires of the flesh. And thus what happens? Footholds and strongholds are formed in our lives. Footholds are not that strong, you know. Footholds, you know, God can truly, you know, deal, but sometimes things are such strongholds. That's when something has taken, and, and, and John's not here, but he would say strangleholds. Literally, I mean, it's like you are wrapped around with chains and you can't move. You, it's like you say, I am helpless and I, I, I and I'll just give some examples. Say pornography. Say, you know, they say in churches over 50%, that's almost hard to believe. 60% actually is what they say uh, of the men. And women, there are women too that get into pornography. And they are in chains. They cannot get out of it. You know, and, if, and, and what is it? It's a stronghold. It's a demonic stronghold. Let's say alcoholism. I'm just going to pick the, some that are really, really obvious. Uh, it, you know, you, you see uh, addicts. Uh, we had a neighbor. He would come to our house. Jeff and I would witness to him. Unfortunately, he said he was saved, but he kept drinking, and his, his liver he died shortly thereafter. One of the last times we witnessed him, not that long after, one of the most powerful times we witnessed to him, he, he couldn't stop drinking and his liver just was destroyed. What is it? Those are strongholds that the enemy has put. Drug addiction. I mean, there's so many things. It can be, it can be uh, bitterness can be a stronghold. It can be different things in our lives that we think, oh, well, you know, I really enjoy this, so I'm not going to quit. And every time we persist to do it one more time, the chains get stronger and thicker and harder to break. And that is why we need divine help to break these chains. And I know that many times, I know that in most Christ, um, Baptist circles, they don't talk too much about deliverance. But guess what? The Bible talks about deliverance, and people need to be delivered from these demonic strongholds. And today we're going to have a service. Yeah, may, you answer me. Absolutely.
Thank you, Mary. Mary just said, for those that couldn't hear her, that so many times we pray for the unsaved, and that's wonderful. We should be praying for the unsaved. But many times, many, many times, we neglect to pray for our, our own household of the faith, for those that are weak in the faith. And uh, we need to do that, that God would break the strongholds that, for the weak, for the st- we need prayer sometimes to ourselves. I mean, it's so wonderful when you have, my niece and I were talking about that this week, and she called me about having Christian fellowship and, and good Christian friends who will pray for you and who will fast for you. That is a good friend. That is a good friend that you know is a friend. They will, they will literally pray and fast for you. We need to do that. I think our churches would be so much stronger if we did that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to read this real quick. This, uh, this, last night I prayed. I said, God, speak to me through a devotional, one of David Wilkerson's. And I said, this is perfect. I, I, I wasn't even going to put it in the, the lesson today, but I think it is on key for today. Because today, like I said, we see so many things happening. I mean, we see uh, uh, oh, calamity everywhere. We see distress we see persecution, we see all kinds of things. This is an excellent, encouraging devotional, and it's titled Under God's Control. That's why sovereignty is my favorite subject, uh, the sovereignty of God. But it's uh, by David, the late David Wilkerson. In these last days, the Lord's eye is not fixed on world powers, but on the church of Jesus Christ. God is not focused on on the economy, on the rise of world religions, on the roaring of the heathen, and boy, do they roar. (laughs) According to Isaiah, the nations are to God as a drop of a bucket. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15. They are all under his sovereign rule and reign. God knows all about terrorist threats. Wars and rumors of wars. His word warns that the heathen will rage. That's uh, Psalm 2. Secular powers will try to outlaw Christianity. And fast-growing antichrist movements will boast they'll rule the world and destroy Jesus' followers. We're already seeing that. The Bible says this about it all. The kings of the earth set themselves. This is a psalm too. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, we're his anointed. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. In short, let's cast away all moral hindrances, all moral landmarks of the past. I'll stop right here. The Bible, prayer, Anything that's moral and good, it, the enemy is using people, atheists, progressives, liberals, uh, communists, socialistic, social, uh, socialistic people to try to do away with all this. Here is God's reaction to these earthly powers and demon-influenced men. He, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. I've heard Mike say that. He shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. That's confusion, utter chaos. No matter how desperate things look, everything remains under God's control. I bolded this and underlined it. I'll repeat it again. No matter how desperate things look, everything remains under God's full control. I'm thankful for this word from the Psalms. More and more we hear reports of secularism wiping out the evangel. uh, evangelical church in Europe, of Islam being the fastest growing religion in the world, of homosexuals hijacking entire denominations, of Christ's church growing so weak it no longer has any impact on society, yet God's word declares on Christ the rock, God will build his church. I only have two short paragraphs left. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it, Matthew 16, 18. Nothing from the bowels of hell 
can hope to destroy Christ's church. His eye is always on his people, and through everything he warns Satan and his hordes, do not touch the apple of my eye. And then he quotes here Isaiah 54, 15. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Do you see what God is saying here? The devil is going to come at you. Enemies out of hell will gather together against you. But, there it is, always the but. But Satan will not succeed. Once again, Satan will not succeed. Why? Because we are already victors and victorious. In Jesus Christ we are seated and I'll end with that verse that I started with we are seated in heavenly places even now positionally and spiritually we we've already won and we need to we need to meditate on on his word so we can know the power that's available to us and the victory that's available to us let's pray Dear Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you once again, Lord, for how you just, oh, Lord, minister to us through the riches of your word. Help us to, to dedicate our lives, Lord, to want to get to know you more intimately through your word and in communion with you, God. Help us to know that your words are treasures. Your word calls them, Lord, like gold, better than gold. Oh, Father God, help us to know the truths of, of knowing that we are seated in heavenly places. We are victorious in you because of what you did on the cross for us. Thank you for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, now I ask for the, remain, for the next service. Uh, I pray for uh, those that will be preaching, uh, every person that gets up there, the worship leaders, everyone, that everything would be done for your honor and glory that we would see souls saved, people delivered, uh, people uh, reconciled, Father, people healed, convicted of sin, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.